What's going on guys? Ronnie with JRP Performance here. Today we wanted to take a minute to talk, or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, however long it takes. <laughs> We're going to talk about aluminum rods, pros and cons, why people use them, why we use them in the high horsepower build that we do. Slaughter packages get the aluminum rods. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's just jump right in. So the first thing I want you guys to notice is an aluminum rod compared to a steel rod. This is a 4B11 rod. So 4G63 would actually have a smaller uh, big end housing. Uh, but you guys can see just how thin this is compared to this. The reason that the aluminum rod is so much thicker is because it's a weaker alloy. So you have to have more material for it to have the strength of a steel rod. Now, uh, you might be asking why the heck wouldn't you just run a steel rod? Well, when you're making anything past, I would say like 250 horsepower per hole, um, you know, you're putting a lot of, lot of load on those bearings. I mean, you're just hammering those bearings. I don't care how soft you are on the timing of peak torque and just in general, if it's making that much power, it's hammering the bearings. So the aluminum rod comes into play and it acts like, like a shock absorber. Think about it like a shock absorber in your car. So basically it takes most of the load that's gonna be transferred uh, to the crankshaft and the bearings and, the, and to, to the crankshaft um, and it's gonna absorb it. So. Uh, it's gonna basically make that hit a lot smoother so you don't have uh, accelerated bearing wear like you would on a steel rod if you're making that much power. Uh, that being said, a lot of people do run steel rods and make a lot of power, but usually, usually cars that actually drag race, uh, they would go to an aluminum rod. One downside of the aluminum rod is that now the rod becomes the service point instead of the bearings, and you do have to change them quite frequently. I would say, depending on the power level, maybe about you know 60 to 80 hits on the track and uh, you got to scrap them and put new ones in there but in my personal opinion um, i feel like it's better to replace your rods than to grab a bearing when you're racing and just ruin your motor trash the block you know throw a rod the car catches on fire it's better to have an aluminum rod and just replace it just for the peace of mind uh another thing is it is lighter even though there is a lot more material the mass is less it has less mass so it is lighter so, uh, you know, it's a little bit easier on the crankshaft, so it's a little bit more horsepower if you think about it. Any weight that you take off of your rotating assembly is going to translate to more power because the engine doesn't have to work as hard. Um, when you're ordering aluminum rods, if you're, let's say you're trying to order pistons and you got off the shelf aluminum rods, you got to make sure that your custom pistons, the manufacturer knows that you are going to be running an aluminum rod. And what they can do is they can offset this wrist pin more to accommodate for the stretch that's going to happen as you run this car because uh, as soon as you turn that motor on and the rod warms up it's going to want to stretch um, either that or you call your rod manufacturer and you custom order rods and you tell them hey i want about you know i'm going to be running it in, on just an off-shelf piston give me about you know five uh, five thousands you know shorter rod or whatever. They usually tend to stretch about four to eight thou, if I'm not mistaken, when it's an operation. Uh, another thing is, in use, uh, you know, as it goes through heat cycles over and over again, this rod is actually gonna stretch, like it's it's just gonna stretch. And you can get to a point that it can actually hit the valves, like you can actually hear it audibly hitting the valves, but that's usually when you've been running it for way too long, you know, you should have changed it a long time ago. But yeah, you do want to be very careful with that stuff. This motor's already been clearance for that, and uh, both the pistons and the rods are custom. Um, another thing you can do is you can play the motor. So uh, you would assemble your pistons and rods, um, or you can really just you know put one rod in there, um, and you know you put your head gasket that you're going to be using. You put your head on there, put two head studs in there. Don't torque them so you don't crush the head gasket. Uh, but you know, just tighten them a little bit um, and you put some silly putty, you put some clay on top of the valve reliefs on the piston. You do have to time the motor and you do have to spin it around. You do it slowly so, so you don't cram the valve into the piston um, and you can take it off and you can actually take the clay and measure it and see how much clearance you got. I already know this block has clearance because uh, of all the specs that we provided. Um, so yeah, that's the most important things you guys need to know. It does have a fatigue life and it does become the service point. Um, so less hit on the bearings, less wear on the bearings, lighter on the crankshaft, so more horsepower, um, but you do have to replace it. If you street drive it and you don't, you're not making a lot of power and you're not launching the car and you're going 180 miles an hour over and over again, you can get, you know, 10, 15,000 miles out of it. I mean, I've had it in my car for about 4,000 miles now, I, I would say. Um, I have no issues with it, but 
you know, my car is just a weekend warrior. Um, so that's that about aluminum rods. Uh, another thing you guys will notice is the bolts that you get are usually going to be longer than when you get with a steel rod. And that's, again, because it's so much thicker that you need a longer bolt. And these bolts, actually, they, spe they specify you to use uh, just a regular 30 weight or a 50 weight oil. As opposed to like a high pressure lube that you would use on like a manly rod or a um, Carrillo rod or, you know, something like that. And uh, they give you stretch value that you have to achieve. It's just like any other rod. I mean, there's really nothing crazy about it. It's just a different material of rod. Now let's move into the assembly portion of it. This box already assembled. I mean, I do have to drop those last two in, but everything else is assembled. It's already clearanced and everything. And these two have actually been stretched, torqued and stretched. So those are good to go. One thing you have to be very careful with, and you're probably gonna encounter this on any rod, aluminum rod on a 4G, except uh, I wanna say the Vaders because the Vaders, I, I, I never have to clearance them. They just clear the block perfectly. Uh, so if Ian can show you guys here real quick, the block is actually notched there. So when I put the first rod in there and I tried to turn it over, it was hitting on this side. So when I took this off, I actually notched both sides, just for shits and giggles, because you don't want to, you know, go over and do it twice. Every time this comes apart, when you notch the block, you got to pressure wash it, you got to ATF it. I mean, it makes a big mess. You got to clean everything, put everything back together. It takes a long time, so you don't want to do it twice when you could have done it the first time. Um, if you are on the oil squirter side on the 4G63, obviously the main oil galley goes there. So you have to be careful with how much you notch, just notch as much as you need. Don't go over that because you can literally go inside the oil galley and you can just drop the block. And this block has a lot of money in the machine work aspect of it. So definitely don't want to do that. Um, another thing that's very important with aluminum rods, um, you want at least at least 12 thousandths of the side clearance to the journals so this is a movement that you guys see i've already checked it with my feeler gates for all of them before so they're all good to go but you don't want you definitely don't want it to be tight so if it's at like six thousandths uh i bet you anything as soon as you turn that motor on and get it warmed up it's gonna lock up on the journal um so that's that uh and let's just talk about this block real quick <laughs> So if Ian comes a little close over here, you guys can see this is a full filled block. So this block has been filled with concrete all the way to the top. Um, we do two forms of filling. We do a half fill and we do a full fill. The half fill, you can still drive it around the street. My car is a half fill. I have a half radiator, no overheating issues whatsoever. Um, the main reason is that most of the heat, as a, it, most of the heat basically gets generated at the top of the engine so this portion because the combustion event occurs at the top so if you have coolant running through the top portion of the cylinder you don't have to really worry about overheating issues um, however if you're doing a full fill that changes a lot of things because now you don't have any coolant running through here so uh, two things are gonna happen uh, one your block now can't expand and two it's gonna wanna expand because it's getting a lot hotter now. So what you have to do is you have to run a looser piston to wall clearance just to make sure that that piston, whatever the piston itself expands, is not gonna basically seize against the cylinder because this block can't physically go. It has concrete literally pushing against it from the coolant jacket. So, uh, you know, you do go a little bit looser on the piston to wall clearance, but then again, it's a race motor. So you do have to service it after, you know, so often anyway. Uh, so that's that. Another thing you guys can notice, this block does have O-rings. We provide this service over here. Um, if you're trying to do this yourself, I mean, I'll just give you guys an idea of how it's done. But uh, if you guys want to do it yourself, it's not impossible to do, but it's a very tedious process and you got to be very careful with it. First and foremost, you need to cut grooves. You need to cut grooves on top of the cylinders. Um, there's obviously two ways of doing it. You can O-ring the head, you can O-ring the block. Uh, with this, we still use the MLS head gasket so we don't go to a copper. And I'll get, get to that in a second. But um, what this is, this is just some soft stainless steel wire that's pliable. So you definitely don't want something that's springy. So you don't want to basically bend it and, you know, when you let go of it, you don't want it to, you know, take back its original shape. You want something that you can actually, like, you know, ply and get to the uh, desired, you know, roundness or whatever when you're trying to put it in the cylinder. Because if you don't, then it's just going to want to pop out. Um, if you guys take a close look over here. It's gonna come over here. If you look over here, you can see where the end of that 
wire is because this is literally just wires that you get in like a little box and you have to basically make it you know custom to the size of your bore and the groove that you cut on top of the bore and uh, you guys can see this is the end of the wire so the way this works is they'll cut it a little bit longer and then they'll file this down to make sure that edge is perfectly square because you don't want to just you know use a snipper and snip it it's going to have like a sharp point so you want to file it try to fit it in file it try to fit it in then basically it goes in with like a plastic tool and you hit it with a hammer um, but if you guys notice the end of the wire is right here and the reason that it's here there's a reason that they put it in specific locations if you guys notice there's no coolant jackets here uh, even though this block doesn't have coolant in it this is a common practice that you know machinists do whenever they're putting o-rings in you want it to be as far away from the water jackets as possible because if you do have a you know failure you don't want it to be where the water jacket is um so that's another thing that a lot of people don't think about um you know just the small details um so that's that what else was i going to talk about uh like I said, we're going to be running an MLS head gasket on this. We're going to run a Cometic specific half inch head stud head gasket because this block is actually uh, tapped for half inch head studs, which obviously they're thicker in diameter. So they provide more clamping force at the same torque, um, which is something you definitely need when you're, you know, 60, 70, 80 pounds of boost. I mean, that's some serious boost. Um, but if we wanted to use a copper head gasket, and that's a very, very good option as well. Uh, what we would actually have to do is we would have to protrude this more. So this is right now about five, five and a half thousandths of protrusion. Uh, and uh, let's go to this real quick. When you put your head gasket on there and torque it down, this will create a high pressure area and it will seal up the combustion chamber a lot better. So less likely for your head gasket, for your head gasket to blow when you have you know extreme cylinder pressures. Um, but if you go to a copper gasket, uh, the copper is a very malleable metal. It's very soft. What you would have to do is you would have to protrude this probably another 10,000. So this would stick out a lot more. So you would have to use a thicker wire or just cut like the grooves shorter. Um, and what you would need to do is you would need to cut receiver grooves in the cylinder head. So uh, you can't do that with an MLS because the gasket just distorts a little bit. But if you do with copper, you know, no problem. It'll just push out. When you put the copper gasket on there and you torque it down, this is going to push a groove into the gasket and it, the gasket's actually going to push itself onto the receiver groove that you have on the head. That's another trick that a lot of high horsepower, you know, motors use. It doesn't have to be a 4G63. That's just something that they do. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is for our friends at I Crave Boost Performance. It's gonna be on its way to Colorado next week, and hopefully they're gonna break some serious records with this. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Just wanted to give you guys a little insight and all this stuff. We're gonna have a lot more updates coming up soon.